Welcome to Knock Hill in July, Scottish summer. It's beautiful, isn't it? Don't you just love it? <laughs> Can't beat them. Can't beat them. And you would not want to be anywhere else in the world other than right here. Tell us about the event, Luke. We're here for the McRae Rally Challenge, the second ever McRae Rally Challenge. Sadly postponed by a couple of years, but the main thing is we're here now to celebrate 25 years of Colin McRae as a World Rally Champion. Yep, that's right. It should have been 2020. Yes. But it's now 2022. <laughs> which is the new 2020, obviously. The event, it ran for the first time in 2015. Of course, we had the, the original McRae stages where everybody, all of the world champions came over, competed in that in what I think it was 2008. But the 2015 event was here. It was pretty special as well, wasn't it? It was, and it's a very personal event for me because it was the first ever time I'd driven anywhere that wasn't in the Scottish borders where I grew up. Really? That was my first, yeah, first pilgrimage just to come up here to, to Knock Hill, and the gathering was massive. We had we had Chris Meek and the 2003 Monte Carlo Citroen. It was yeah. it was special, and this weekend's equally special. And it's it's the stories, it's the cars, it's it's just the fever. And we've, we've got plenty of other reasons three generations of McRae to compete here as well. So it's a massively exciting weekend, David. It's, it's one that we've been looking forward to for a really long time. Obviously, it was Goodwood last weekend, all through Goodwood. You know, all of the Max and, and, and Alistair were talking about was wait till next weekend. And, there's, you know, as well as there being a lot of good Scottish drivers here, sadly, Stig Blanc is not here. His flight was cancelled. But as well as, as, as well as all of that, you know, the, the real focus here is the McRae fight, isn't it? You know, this this intergenerational scrap between Jimmy in a Mark II, not really got much of a chance, but he'll give it a go. Uh, and then Alistair in the Hyundai accent. And Max, of course, in a first time ever in a Ford Fiesta Rally 2. It's it's going to be an amazing event. And it's, it's interesting that you mentioned the fight because it can be easy to look at it and say, well, none of them are in equivalent cars. It doesn't mean anything. It does mean something. Like, it means, of <laughs> all, course it does. All three of, of them want does. to be the one that's the fastest McRae. And yeah. honestly, this could be the one and only chance we ever get to have that together. It's, it's incredible to have them. And it's it's a competitive rally. It's a different sort of yeah. rally to they're all used to in their careers. And But it's they all want to win it. And Alistair obviously won it the first time round in 2015 as well. So he's got something to defend. It's amazing. It's going to be an incredible weekend. The sun is probably not going to come out. <laughs> but at the minute, it's not raining. So let's enjoy it. Now, before the event got underway, there was a rather special ceremony right here at what is now called McRae Corner at Knock Hill Racing Circuit. Scotland's, I'm going to say it, Scotland's most famous rallying family, well, motorsport family, I was going to say, but definitely a rallying family, has its own corner at this track. Maybe not what you'd expect, Knock Hill with rallying, but David, there's massive history here for the McRae's, isn't there? Talking to Jimmy, you know, how much does it mean to Jimmy to have a, a corner named at, at Knock Hill? It, it means a huge amount, you know, you've got... Clarks and Stuart Strait, you know, these are absolutely huge names in Scottish motorsport. So for McCranium to be up there, like Jimmy said, alongside those, it, it really means a lot. In 1992, Colin McRae uh, guest drove the ProDrive M3 uh, in a British touring car around here. Uh, and I think finished like eighth or something in the first race. It was quite dry. Second race, uh, it started raining. And of course, Colin completely came into his own. I couldn't really work out at the bottom hairpin why Matt Neal was braking so early uh, and used Matt Neal as a bit of an additional brake uh, and punted him off. Uh, and Matt Neal didn't really see the funny side. Uh, and <laughs> Colin, realising just how big uh, and angry looking Matt Neal was, jumped out of the car, ran back to the ProDrive motorhome. Cue Matt Neal's dad banging on the door of the ProDrive motorhome. David Richards opened the door and tried to explain to, to Steve Neal I think it was six foot seven or something that actually Colin had left. Colin hadn't left, he was hiding in the toilet. <laughs> 1995 is one of the most famous seasons in World Rally Championship history. Why? That epic battle at the end between Colin McRae and Carlos Sainz. Colin ultimately won in this very car. That 95 fight really was massively intense Luke you know you look at the, the way it played out through the season Carlos had his injury in the middle of the year and, and was forced to miss around Colin came back and it kind of crystallized itself in in Spain and with that huge drama where the, the team were in this incredible position of trying to slow him down they'd issued team orders uh, was Colin disobeying him? was Carlos disobeying him? who knows you know ultimately we'll never know exactly what went on there but the upshot was three members of the team in the middle of the road and what were they doing 
standing there trying to slow Colin down. And I have to say, that would be probably last on the list of jobs you wanted to do if you were part of that team that weekend. You probably knew, standing there, that he wasn't going to listen to you. No, not a chance. And, and you talked to Derek Ringer, and did you see him, Derek? Yeah, of course we saw him, and, but there was no hint of a lift uh, at all. That left them tied on points going into the RAC. It was winner takes all, and it was just an epic fight from the word go. You know, Colin was was leading, I think. Then he had to puncture him, under shore. Then he damaged uh, the suspension in Four Stone or somewhere like that in Kielda. Had to make it down the road to Penrith. Got there, got a new corner put on it. it an unbelievable battle all the way through the country, down into Wales. Took the lead in Sweet Lamb, uh, and that was it. You know, from there on, Carlos could do nothing. Yeah, I think honestly, every driver would like to win any championship. They won't care how they do it, but I cannot think of a way that could exemplify and talk about Colin more than this was. He was back against the wall with the puncture. The time recovery from there was ridiculous how he managed to do it, but massive, it must be massive credit to all the spectators and the homes, but he just felt so at home and so well done. And, and as you say, you just kind of sense, as soon as he started picking time up back from his puncture, that it was only going one way. Not but, a great place for Carlos to be. No, to. no, it, absolutely it wasn't. And then, you know, they came through that final stage in Klakainog and Derek Ringer just said it all. That'll do for him. That'll do for me, eh? You join us at the end of the first day of the 2022 McRae Rally Challenge. David, it's raining. I thought you said it was going to be sunny. It was briefly sunny. It was sunny twice for about 30 seconds. Anyone that knows Knock Hill knows there's about five climates all within the space of two minutes, so it's yep. a special place. But the rain is possibly quite an apt way to, to start in terms of the driving conditions today. Quite a difficult day, particularly on the rally school sections up the top there. There was a lot of mud being pulled out, chiefly by this man behind us, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see what that. You'll hear that in the interview in a sec. But yeah, a great first day of, of action, David. It's, it's a strange one in a way, isn't it? Because it is a competitive rally, but it's a lot more relaxed than maybe your yeah. average. Yeah, of course it is. You know, it is it is a rally, and it's a strange rally because, like you say, we've got the juniors first. They go out and do a stage, and then, what do we call it? Seniors? The seniors. They're, they're called <laughs> the seniors. seniors, the seniors so we can the get seniors then that. go out and do the same stage. A really good format because you, it's almost sort of two standalone events within one. So the juniors are all together competing on the stage and then they come off and it's great it's been it, but yeah it's been quite relaxed we had one car roll yes. on stage one, one. yeah, yeah. Uh, which kind of delayed everything a little bit one of the junior cars roll but no a great and like you say it's been all about the weather literally we were in there um, with with Albert and with Alistair before he we went out on the first stage and it was definitely Inter definitely gonna be uh, inters because it'd been raining it was drying and then it was going to be a soft slick, Early and the next, and the, in the end, he went out on a full wet because yeah. the rain arrived. It's, it's an absolute gamble, um, but it's been a, it's been a great day. Out front, we have Scottish driver Gary Pearson. He leads by nine seconds over Scottish rallycross driver, actually Andy Scott. We caught up with Gary a little bit earlier. Started off quite quick this morning. We're three quickest in the first stage, and then uh, Andy Scott's been right on our tail all afternoon. It's been, you know, I think we've we've, we've beat him every stage except one where we were fastest equal. So. Uh, but we managed to pull four of there in the last stage, which was a bit more like it, and uh, giving ourselves nine seconds. So that's good. Happy to be. Hopefully, have a good sleep tonight. Nine seconds, David, around a circuit like this. Five stages day. Five stages tomorrow. He looks. It's the he looks a favourite, but it's, a, it's absolutely nothing. It's a half spin or something, isn't it? And we've seen a few of those today. And Joe Cunningham, you know, is another nine seconds back. It's really close. There's still. As much as we've talked about this being a relaxed event, you know, it's all about the McRae's and the McRae family. There is massive kudos in winning the McRae Rally Challenge, yep. isn't there? You know, as a Scottish driver, I remember back when they did the McRae stages, David Bogey won it, and it, you know, it was one of the highlights of his career. Uh, and it's the same here. You know, if you win this event, people will remember. Yeah, and there's quite a few drivers as well that are trying machinery for the first time this weekend as well. One of those is, of course, Max McRae, who finds himself in sixth overall after the first day, but not the easiest day, David. No, it's not. He's had a, a few issues, but you, you've got to take your hat off to him. Uh, first time ever in a Rally 2 car, like you say. He had maybe half an hour running um, before the start and straight into conditions like this. There's been an, an issue with the with the handbrake on the car, he's not been able to handbrake it. And in some of these really twisty sections, 
up on the, the rally school stage, it makes the car really difficult to drive. You lost power steering up there as well, I think, on the yeah. last one. So it's just when it's, you know, when you'd really, really want the handbrake to give you that bit of turning, he's lost power steering as well. So there have been some issues. For me, it's a really solid start. It's everything that we've seen from Max in Donny Gaul, uh, where he was on the podium in the class in a, in a rally four, four car. <laughs> uh, and then at Goodwood last week, you know, jumping into uh, an Audi Quattro E2 and just taking off up the hill. Amazing, you know, yeah. great third weekend on the bounce. Let's now hear what Max had to say about his day. It's been um, probably one of the trickiest days um, so far in the in the 2022 program over here in, uh, in the UK and a bit of Europe. So, um, yeah, we started off the day. It was good, good first stage, just trying to get used to the car. But the tr uh, conditions are real tricky and, and um, slippery with the, a lot of people cutting the corners. So it's just dragging mud and, and stuff onto the onto the, the stages. So, um, but in the second stage, unfortunately, the, the clutch um, ended up having a bit of a slip throughout the whole stage. Um, but they got that sorted out um, afterwards. We didn't have to withdraw or anything. So we got that sorted and that was all out of the way. Um, and it was uh, just a little bit of problem in the next stage after the gearbox, but there's no problem. The NPL sorted out and we're okay. Um, but unfortunately, that stage um, we lost power steering, so I had a bit of a workout through the whole stage and um, got my arms pumping. So, but we're here now, and that's the main thing. So Max was talking there about it being a really difficult day. It was a really tricky day. Alistair made a great start early doors, then had some engine issues. Uh, in the last stage it was a real shame yeah. took a lot of time coming through that last stage and he's dropped right down the order but just fantastic to see him back out in this car it is and it is a car that obviously everyone will know it's got history and i was looking up some some st stats is what i'm looking for there <laughs> on ewrc and i think he drove great this, website it is a very good website and i believe he drove this car on the, the 2000 corsica rally oh, right. i think it's definitely a start. I think it started out live as a Kenneth Erickson car, but either way, to see Alistair back in the car that he used to drive is fantastic. As I say, just a shame that it didn't go all the way, but the boys here have been working hard and we were, I think, two, three hours after the, yeah. the action finished and they're still here trying to get it ready for tomorrow, so a big effort. And, and great as well to see Ian Grindrod back in the car. Last time Ian Grindrod was in one of these cars with Alistair McRae, they were pretty much flat in fifth gear and then had a huge accident. Uh, in testing some way back in the 2000s. So great to see them back. Let's listen to what Alistair's had to say about his, his, his first day. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's been good fun. A lot of people here, the weather's been quite tricky, a bit of rain on and off. Uh, and it was going pretty well in the wet, but as it's, as it's dried out, uh, we've had a problem with the engine and dropped power. The second last stage then kind of dropped all the power there, so we just cruise through to get through the stage and uh, we'll see if the boys can do something with it. Now some of the drivers, Max, has accused you of pulling quite a lot of that mud out onto the road. Well, when you get old and mature and you get to run first on the road, you've got to up for everybody else. <laughs> you've done that royally today. <laughs> yeah, I did my best. <laughs> a typically forthright and humorous McRae response there from Alistair, but Alistair and Max have both learned from this man here, Jimmy McRae, the third of our generation of McRae's here this weekend. Quite a nice moment actually in one of the stages where he basically pulled over to let Max pass. It felt like a change in regard a little bit, but otherwise, good day for him. <laughs> great day for him. He wouldn't have been pulling over for anybody else, so no. Would he? <laughs> but no, a great day for Jim. You know, it is just, it's tremendous to see. He's what, he's 78 year old and just brilliant. He, the guy is just loving it, absolutely loving it. It's, it's, it's everything that he wants to do, isn't it? Be out on a Saturday and a Sunday driving these cars, having fun with his friends and family. And let's hear what Jimmy had to say now. It's a bit tricky this morning with all the rain and stuff, but you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And we've had a big battle with Steve Bannister. Uh, so yeah, fine, great. But surely the big battle is the McRae family battle. How's, how's that going? Uh, I think I'm third. <laughs> I think you might be. A bit, it's all about. I mean, it's it's all about enjoying yourself as well, isn't it, today? Yes. No, it's great. I mean, that car, the 2008 car from the Roger Albert Clark, and it's basically the same specification. So, no, uh, yeah, we're, we're thoroughly enjoying it, and if we can still fight. You know, with Steve Bannister in the same class, I'm quite happy. So that is it. That's the end of day one of the McRae Rally Challenge. What a fantastic day! Awesome cars. Stunning scenery, it stopped raining briefly uh, and we're going to do it all again tomorrow.
We are. I, I can't wait. It's been a quite a long day because there's quite gaps and everything. But a long when day. You, Listen to yourself. I, I was Surrounded say, by this. Well, you, you <laughs> finish, David. I was going to say it's it's mad to see so many cars. These ones aren't even McRae cars. They're just special rally yeah. cars. And this Escort for me in particular is a highlight. But we'll not get sidetracked too much. It's just, we could be here could, all night, couldn't we, could. we? We've been talking about these cars already for a long time. It's been a great day. We will see you again tomorrow. It is Sunday morning. Luke, Barry, how excited are you about day two of McRae Rally Challenge? Very excited, and the key thing is Look David, at them, get excited. <laughs> you can't That's do that. better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, it's so start to the morning, but look, the sun is out, and there's a couple of grey clouds over there, but we're gonna yeah. ignore that. The sun is they're here. They're not no, coming no. over this way. No, they're not. We'll, I've got we'll my cap ready, not. just in case. <laughs> they don't know. Sunshine, blue sky, it's gonna be a great day. And we're here in the junior service area. I'm not gonna call it a paddock. They no. might think it's a paddock, it's not. No. This weekend is a service yeah. service area, not service park as well. Yeah, that's a very Old good school. distinction. Well done, David. Yeah, thanks very but much. Yeah, Luke. we have got a junior rally running alongside the senior this weekend. And this ultimately is where the next Colin McRae will come from, the next star of the Scotches, potentially even further afield into rallying as well. So great to see them all out here. And we were watching some of them yesterday. Some of these things, three cylinders, but they're loud. Trust they me, they, loud they make an impression. They make an impression. And, and a, I mean, a great place to watch them because, you know, there's so much commitment needed to carry the speed of these cars and five stages today and how many miles Luke? I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, it's a 38 mile event so if it's half I'll say it's 19. Yeah, 19, 19 so, miles. No we'll say 19, we'll say 19. Excellent. <laughs> this weekend is a rally so of course it's all about competition but we're here for something much bigger to celebrate Colin McRae and his legacy. Here's what the family had to say. You know, it's incredible the legacy that Colin left behind and I can't thank everyone enough for keeping his memory alive and when you hear Holly talking about how special it is for her to hear all the stories and fill in the blanks and just give her, you know, memories of her dad which, you know, I can't give her all the memories so it is really important and it's so nice for everyone to come along and support these events. I mean, you see the crowds that are here today, Sunday, I mean, it was yesterday, it, you know, it was amazing the people that were here, the rain and the weather went so bad, but this morning it's just queuing to get in. When we came at uh, seven, seven o'clock this morning, uh, it's just, it's quite, it's just very heartwarming to see that the interest is still there and uh, it's, well, the, the, it's the McRae name that's pulling the people here, I'm sure. And when you see all the cars lined up yesterday, uh, there was a bit of a tear in my eye, yeah. I've watched um, from the first kind of like full video of like our video of from the first event in WRC to the last event in the season, I've watched that from like Colin's first event or like from 1990, I've watched like all of them. I've seen all of his, his career moments like the where he had to slow down in Spain but he didn't. Um, yeah, to the, to the Rally GB when he, where he won at the RAC Rally. So I've, I've watched a lot of it and I've, I've done my homework. So with Nicky and Derek Ringer and, and those big names here there, you hear the stories from them. Derek was telling me about how strong the, the wing is on the Sierra Cosworth. He said it'd be safer being in a car with Colin being setting on, sitting on the wing. He said the car would be absolutely destroyed after a crash and the big whale tail wing would just be, be sitting there perfect. Um, so yeah, you, you do hear all the stories and it's pretty, it's heartwarming to, to hear the stories. It was the way he drove, what he meant to rally and it still has continued on through the generation so it's uh, very hard to put a, a thing to it but it, it works. When you're in the car driving round you don't actually realise till you stop and all the cars are parked there that you realise how many there is and uh, to see them all in one place you're not going to you're not going to see that again unless there's another event like this so to see them all there all together and to have the family there Max there my daughter there obviously mum and dad and Stuart Holly it's just amazing Holly McRae was the star of this stage 
when she got the opportunity to talk to six-time Olympic champion Sir Chris Hoy. Today I am joined with Sir Chris Hoy. Hello. Hello everybody. Nice to be here. So we're just going to round off with a little bit of a chat and then we'll let you get on with your evenings. So to begin, I feel as though most people will know you as a household name due to your very um, highly successful cycling career and it's in more recent years that you've made the move towards motorsport. Why is that? Well, it's probably no surprise actually, it's because of your dad. Um, so like most people here, Colin was an inspiration and really sparked my interest in motorsport. So, you know, I was cycling never in a million years. I genuinely never imagined I'd be doing any sort of motorsport at all. But it was Colin, his career, his life, everything that, that really sparked that interest. So, so I've been racing now for nine se or 10 seasons, but this is the first time I've actually got out and ridden, uh, driven in a, in a rally. So I'm a complete novice. So please excuse any of the terrible driving that you might have seen today so far from me. But um, yeah, it's, it's just been fantastic. And yeah, I mean, I wonder for, for you, what's it like to see this, how much your dad means to, to, to so many people around the world? I mean, there's, there's lots of racing drivers that have been successful, lots of rally drivers, lots of sports people, but there's something that goes, I don't know, it goes beyond. He is a legend of motorsport and, and to see this, I mean, it's 27 years since he won his world title. Yeah. The amount of love and support and, and just this, this huge fan base he has, it's incredible. How does it feel for you? Yeah, no, it is absolutely incredible. I love coming to events like these where you get to meet people that all have their stories and little anecdotes to tell about my dad, his career, different things that they've seen him do or things that they've heard him say. And for me, it keeps his memory alive. Mm -hmm. And it really means a lot that everyone here probably has a different story about how they came across Colin McRae or what the name McRae means to them. And there's a few faces here that I'm starting to see again and again at these sorts of events, which is really special. And I hope things like this can only continue. And seeing lots of young kids here as well, it's really special. And a lot of these kids weren't even born when my dad was rallying. So it's really lovely that it's been passed through the generations. Square right. That was the McRae Rally Challenge. What a fantastic two days action and emotion. And this just about sums it up, doesn't it? It's fans like these, you know, fans that totally transform their road cars. Is that a road car? It, well, it's sort of a road we, we car. We weren't sure about this, were we? This no. has a roll cage in it. So if it is a road car, it's a pretty serious it's a, one. It's <laughs> a pretty safe one as well. <laughs> that is well but yeah. it, this place has just been full of these, full of Subarus. Everywhere you look and everywhere you turn, you've heard the flat four, the Subaru Impreza. It's been amazing. It's just a, a real treat and honor to have been here. In terms of competition, uh, sun shone a bit more today, less rain today. That's it, yeah, and no less action on the stages as well. We have to say our congratulations to Gary Pearson for winning the event. And it's been quite a long weekend, so uh, nice to get that last stage uh, done with no, with no real drama, so very, very happy. My first rally was the McRae stage in 2008, the uh, day after I passed my test, so uh, to come here and, and win a, another McRae rally is just fantastic. And credit to the organisers, credit to McRae's for, uh, for coming over for it, and uh, delighted it went well for them. And we definitely have to say a big congratulations to Max McRae. You know what? I, okay, there's been some issues with the car, but just a fantastic performance. It was all about, we, do, we talked about this McRae fight. There was never really going to be a McRae fight with, with Jimmy in the Mark II and, and Alistair in a 20-year-old world rally car. But it was a, it was a nice storyline. But fundamentally, it was about 
Max McRae coming here and learning a completely yep. new car, wasn't it? It was, and he certainly not embarrassed himself either. It is hard, as you say, because he had a few issues to properly read into the pace, but when everything was going well, he really wasn't far away, and it would be so easy for an 18-year-old lad to come here. He knows the, the emotion of the weekend. He could get lost in that, but he hasn't. He's, he's enjoyed all the, the show aspects, but he's kept himself focused on the driving as well, so incredible performance. So we talked a lot about Max there. Let's listen to what Max had to say about his second day of McRae Rally Challenge. Today, day two was, was good, no problems today. And um, we just topped it off with a stage win outright. So that's couldn't ask for more today. I was going to say, it is the perfect end to, as you say, a slightly frustrating weekend. But what does that stage win mean to you? And, and how big a push was it on that last one? Um, yeah, well, definitely pushing pretty hard. You'll definitely see that on the on the off the start of the, the last stage. We had a bit of a moment, but we just kept it flat and it was OK. <laughs> Yeah, we were having a push and it definitely meant a lot and it gave, gave me a good reading of where we actually sit against some of the quicker, quicker boys in the R5s so, and the Rally 2s. So it is good and we'll take, take away and have learnt heaps, so there's not more, much more we could take away from it. I mean, OK, the result wasn't what you, you hoped for when you come to an event, but it's still been, a, it's been an awesome event. A lot of people here, amazing amount of cars, great to see all Collins' cars out together and parked up in the, the straight start finish straight yesterday was pretty awesome. So it's been an awesome event. Not the result, but uh, enjoyed it and we'll come back sometime again, I'm sure. Yeah, there was a bit of talent behind that wheel, yes, there was a bit of talent behind that wheel. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you don't want to damage this, these nice old cars, so uh, I'm glad it's back in one piece. So obviously there was the battle with Max and Al, so they had a bit of an advantage in terms of the machinery, but you must be quite proud of Max, first of all, a stage win on the last stage there as well. Uh, definitely, and you know, what he did in, in uh, Donegal as well, is just, uh, he's proven to be very sensible and just drive to his ability. You know, whether he's had one or two wee problems there, and sometimes, you know, when you have a problem, it gets you, you know, overexcited and you try a lot harder on the next stage, but he just seems to just drive at his speed and... No, I'm very, very proud of him. Beyond the competition, beyond what we've seen from, from the three generations of McRae, we've seen some unbelievable cars uh, in the, the demonstration today. It was just, I mean, to see uh, Max in the, in the 1995 championship winning car, Collins car from the RAC, with Emmy, his sister, alongside doing donuts and the flag out the window, it was, it, I mean, it was, Hairs on the back of the neck. It was that, touching it? it, and you were actually saying to Emmy after as well that you were there and you saw the original. Now you've seen yeah. the, the recreation, <laughs> so yeah. to speak. So it's to, to have been there in at Chester Racecourse and seen Derek Ringer holding the, the salt tower out the window, it was it was amazing. Yeah, it's come sort of full circle if you like. But great, great weekend. Uh, highlight. Tough question. I've got a little bit of sunburns. So that's the will. I'm going to go in the first one. Somehow in Scotland, it not kill I've managed that. But highlight it's windburn. Possibly, Windburn. but I think generally just being here and seeing so much passion from everyone, it's a bit of a cringing, like, sort of cliche answer, ah, but as you see, everything we're walking around here, and these are people that just loved Colin, and they want to celebrate Colin with their with their road cars, and the amount of stories you hear, David, yeah. you probably know most of them anyway, how well connected you are. Yeah, <laughs> but oh, to, obviously. But to, <laughs> but to hear them, but, to hear them all retold, and everybody here together yeah. is special. And to see, you know, the, the absolute emotion from the family, you know, to see Holly and Alison yesterday down here, it, it's been, an amazing weekend and as we said you know such a collection of cars in the right place I, I guess you know ideally you'd rather it was in the woods somewhere but Knock Hill is Scottish motorsport isn't it it is yeah this this is our center of motorsport I guess so what better yeah. way to do it we don't really do circuits very often at Dirtfish but <laughs> we're happy to do one this weekend so thank you very much for watching and see you next time